2025 is right around the corner and I know with every new year that brings in a lot of new game devs. So in order to help you guys out, I'm gonna be giving you guys 15 Unity based tips in order to get you more familiar with the system and on your way to making better games. Starting off with tip number one, guys, this is my most useful tip. And I know it's like not, it's not exactly related to Unity, but it's so, so useful. And I wish I would have listened to it myself, but it's starting off small. Any project that you're gonna be using in Unity, if you're just getting into game dev and you're just getting into Unity, start off small, learn the engine, learn the programs, learn the mechanics, learn how building games actually works from the start to the finish. Trust me on this one, guys. If you're gonna go into game dev and you wanna make the next RPG MMO, it's just not gonna work out. So let's start small, let's make some Pong clones, let's make some Flappy Bird clones, and let's just learn the system, guys. So now that we got that out of the way, let's head into tip number two. Go explore the Unity asset page. Guys, there's so many free assets out there. If art is just not your thing, then it's okay to use any type of asset you want, especially when you're just learning. Yeah, there's a lot of them that you gotta pay for, and we can get into that a little bit later about flipping assets and using them in commercial games. But honestly, guys, you guys have so much here to work with. Granted, if you wanna learn art and that's one of your weak points and you really wanna focus on that, that's okay. I'm not saying you have to use the asset store, but if you're really trying to learn game dev and you wanna cut your time in half, just getting down programming and learning the Unity interface, this is gonna cut your time in half by just using all of these art assets because you already have them here for you. Now, let's step into tip number three. You really need to master the Unity interface. It is so important and so time consuming. And honestly, it's a little intimidating when you're new to it. I mean, look at this thing. There's so much going on. Between all of the assets I have in my scene, switching between the different scene views, animator views, game views, and Knowing all of this and what everything's going to do as soon as you get into the program is super overwhelming. It's okay that you don't know everything just yet, but going through here and learning all of the tools that you have available to you in the scene view and getting familiar with everything and where you can find everything in your project is going to be super useful for you in the long run. And once you actually start learning the Unity interface, that leads me into tip number four. You just need to learn the C-sharp basics. I know this one isn't exactly Unity related, but it does go hand in hand with game development. Personally, me, I'm not very great at coding and that's okay. You don't have to be great at coding. There's a lot of great games that came out where the developers flat out just weren't good at coding, but it is important for us to be able to at least understand C Sharp. So for all of us that are new to C Sharp, I recommend going on YouTube and searching up some smaller tutorials, just being able to make some smaller scripts and being able to move some items in the game is help you understand the programming language a lot more. I really recommend going on YouTube and just trying to mess around with a few tutorials before getting started with game dev. Now from here on out, the rest of my tips are going to be more Unity focused, so make sure you stay tuned for the more juicier ones. I have a new goal this year, and it's to put as much effort into my YouTube channel as possible while working on my game. I think I have a lot to offer when it comes to talking about games. So if that's something you guys want to see, please like the video and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. It really helps me out a lot and will help me achieve my goal of growing my channel this year in 2025. All right, I'll see you guys back in the video. Let's get into tip number five, using prefabs. Prefabs are such a useful tool in Unity, but it took me a little bit to understand what they were. So a prefab is basically an item that you've made in the game already and that you're able to copy and paste. Think of it as copying and pasting one item over and over again. It's really useful for things like power-ups and coins even that you would see in like Super Mario. Prefabs are super useful and they're gonna save you a lot of time. If you come look at my game, Finality, I have a prefab going for this night I'm working on. And honestly, it's gonna help me in so many levels where I'm just copying and pasting my night in straight into the level and no coding, no nothing necessary because it's already done for me. Now let's get into tip number six. Yeah, we're keeping these fast. So when you're working on these Unity tutorials on YouTube, you're gonna to wanna to break them down so you're actually understanding the code that you're writing and copying. It's one thing if you're just gonna copy and paste all the code from these tutorials, but you actually need to understand what it's doing and understand what they're teaching you. I like to think of it as somewhat of like a college class or a high school class. You kind of are there just to grasp the concept of what the tutorial is giving you and not just copying and pasting everything that you're seeing. That gets us into tip number seven. Guys, practice good scene organization. Scene organization is a killer, and honestly, if I'm going to be completely honest here, I don't have the best scene organization myself, but I do have somewhat of a little breakdown, so it's easier for me to find everything that I'm looking for. When I'm talking scene organization, I'm talking about your project assets. 
So if you see down here, I have everything in my folders and everything is labeled. So if I'm looking for any assets, they're all gonna be in my asset folders and I kind of know where I'm leaning towards. So if I need characters, they're in the character folder. Anything environment related is gonna be in the environment folder. I even have all of my animations, all of my prefabs and everything you can possibly need labeled in a folder. But it's also important to work with like empty objects in your hierarchy. So you're able to put more items inside of these objects and label them and organize them way better. It's just easier for when you're running around looking for things that you just can't find and it's gonna save you a lot of time in the end. Guys, I'm not joking to you. When I first started, I hated, hated, hated animating anything. Even if I already had the animations done, I just didn't really know the interface for the animator or working with the animator at all in Unity. So getting used to that and getting comfortable with that is gonna save you so much time and make you feel so much better when you're actually animating. It took me a few times to actually work with it and play with it to understand it fully. And now that I have a way better grasp on it, I have no problem animating and honestly, actually, it's one of my favorite things to do because I'm so familiar with it now that I can just kind of fly through it and it's almost like I don't have to think about what I'm doing. So I would really just recommend just going in the animator and messing around with it because if you're anything like me, it's going to save you so much time and honestly, just don't be afraid of it. Just get in there and mess around with it. All right. And that brings us to tip number nine. Let's talk about UI. So UI is so important because honestly, every game is going to need it. Unity has so many different things built into it already when you're talking about UI. You're actually working with a way bigger canvas than you're used to when you're working in Unity. Unity already has so many pre-built in components available for UI like buttons and sliders and even images. So it's almost a way better bet for you just messing around with that and trying to build your own AI or going out and having to create all of these assets yourself. And that brings me to tip number 10. Let's talk about debugging. Unity has a great debugging tool and it's gonna be built into your code. So this takes me back to why learning how to code is important, but let me show you how it works. Basically, you're gonna to wanna to go into your Visual Studio coding program of choice. Once you're in there, anywhere that you really need to debug things and see if things are actually working correctly. So once we're there, we're gonna type in debug.log and we're gonna want it to read out a string to us. So if you type it exactly the way I type it, since we're writing it in an update void, it should just be reading out test every single frame possible. Now, that's obviously not a good thing and we don't really want that to happen, but you can see where this would be useful in other parts of the code. Like in this coding example, if we wanted to check to make sure that our patrolling was even getting activated, putting a little debug right underneath here to make sure it was even getting to this part of the code would be a great way to see if we are having issues in the code beforehand or after this point. Debugging is honestly one of the most annoying things in Unity and game development in general, but using this tool is going to help you so much. And I honestly, honestly could not think of one of Unity's better tools. And that brings me over to tip 11, using Unity's documentation. Whenever you're trying to learn something, having the holy encyclopedia for it right next to you is honestly a godsend when it comes to learning new things. And that's why I use all of Unity's documentation. They have pretty much everything you can possibly need when using their tool up on their website. So just giving a quick Google search is going to help you find and understand any of the concepts that you're struggling with way better than before you even Googled it. They have everything you can possibly think of from animations to AIs to even all the classes you would use in C Sharp. There's so much here on their website that if you're not using this whenever you get stuck, you're honestly missing out and just wasting a bunch of time. But that brings me to my 13th tip. Let's talk about scene gizmos. Honestly, it might be something that you have activated that you don't really know about, and I'm going to show you exactly where it is in Unity. So if you're in Unity in your scene window, if you go all the way to the top right and you see this little orb here with like these dots on the side of it, if you click that on and off, you'll see that it's enabling icons within my scene view. And this is so useful for when you have like invisible game objects and you want them placed in a certain position reference and other sorts of scripts but you can't see where they actually are so enabling some of these gizmos is going to give you icons and help you see things like hit boxes and collider boxes that you weren't able to see while it's off and that takes me to my 14th tip let's talk about build settings when you're actually done with the game so i've actually only ever built games for windows but honestly if you have other types of computers out there i would recommend just messing around with the build settings and trying to build some of your projects so you can run it as an application and just getting comfortable and understanding those mechanics when it comes to actually finishing your game. 
If you want to find your build settings, you can just go up to file and then build settings is right there. There's all sorts of devices that you can build for and it kind of depends on what you downloaded when you downloaded Unity. But I'd really recommend playing around with this and getting comfortable with this when you're building your games. So if you're ever in a jam or doing a game jam, you're not rushed when it comes to this. And guys, that brings me to my last tip with Unity. Get comfortable with the package manager. Package manager is one of those things that if no one really told you it was there, you probably wouldn't know about it. So if you're in Unity and you go up to your window and go all the way down here to package manager, that's where you're gonna find what Unity has already built into it. Now this is the thing with the package manager. You might not have it downloaded. So the reason that it's one of those things you might not know about is that you have to actually go here and download it yourself. So if you wanna do something like post-processing, it's here. You just have to scroll all the way down, find it, install it, and then you're able to use all the tools that it gives you. So guys, those are my 15 tips when it comes to using Unity if you're new to the game. I know it was a little overwhelming, and there's a lot when it comes to using Unity, but I think if you stick around and you just keep getting more comfortable with the tool and making projects, you'll be a pro in no time. So once again, my goal for this year is to push this YouTube channel as hard as possible. So if you guys like this video and it helps you out, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.